I Love Mortgage Brokering, Episode 13. Want to rock your mortgage business? Then crank up the volume with your host, Scott Peckford, on I Love Mortgage Brokering. Hi, Broker Nation. I am thrilled to introduce our guest today, Richard de Guzman. Richard is a mortgage broker with Mortgage Architects based out of Calgary, Alberta. He's been a broker for the last eight or nine years, and I've been trying to key up this interview for some time, so I'm excited to talk to you. How are you doing today, Richard? I'm doing great. Thanks, Claude. How are you doing? Good. So I like to always start off by asking about yourself and your business. So would you mind telling us, telling our listeners a little bit about yourself and your mortgage business? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was born and raised in Calgary. Tell you a little bit about myself first. Um, seems to be a little bit of a rarity in this city these days. Uh, so many people kind of moving in and, in and out. Um, but I was born and raised here, so kind of uh, entrenched in this market and know quite a bit about it. Um, I'm married, a father of two beautiful girls, ages five and seven. They keep me on my toes every day. Um, in regards to my mortgage business, I've, I've been in the financial banking industry since uh, late 1999, so it's been a while now. And I've been in various roles throughout the bank and finally became licensed as a mortgage broker uh, at the beginning of 2006. So as you had mentioned, it's been uh, just about eight years now. Um, worked with a few different brokerage firms and uh, came to Mortgage Architects in January of last year, 2013. And I've got a small team of uh, myself and four agents. And our business is primarily concentrated uh, just in and around uh, Calgary and the surrounding area. Awesome. And uh, so you obviously you had a banking background that before you got into brokering. Did that you find exactly. it make it the transition easier, or, or what was the what was the transition like? Well, I think it w- was. I, I wouldn't say easy, but I mean maybe easier from the standpoint that I kind of knew a little bit about the product already. It was, you know, I knew what a mortgage was, um, but maybe not the ins and outs of it. But I had dealt with it before. Um, but just kind of you know dealing with clients. On I was a personal banker in a branch for about three years prior to coming over and just doing the mortgage side of things. So, you know, just the client interaction, stuff like that, that kind of helped. But there still was definitely that learning curve because, you know, I was used to just dealing with um, one particular financial institution and their product lineup. Whereas, you know, when you become a broker, obviously, you've got now, you know, several different lenders, several different type of products. So you kind of, that was kind of the learning curve. Um, what made it a little bit more difficult, but at the same time, it's just learning. So, you know, it wasn't that hard. Right. And my wife came from a banking background before she became a broker. And she tells me that she, you know, she thought she understood lending and then she became a broker. And it's like, oh my goodness, there's so, it's vast the amount of, you know, stuff that you need to learn. But the people side of it, if you get that and you understand the concepts, you can pick it up pretty quick. But absolutely. I agree with that for sure. So before I dive into your story, I always like to start with a success quote that has impacted your life or business. So could you share with us a quote, a quote that's impacted you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've got one that I've kind of just has stuck with me um, since I was probably in high school. And that was a quote by Michael Jordan. Um, I failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. Oh, that's great. I love Michael Jordan. It's an awesome story. So how? give me an example of how you've applied that to your life or business. Well, I just always try to remember that things never always really work out as planned. Um you know, sometimes they do, but a lot of times that they don't. And that disappointments and failures, I look at, try and look at those anyways as just steps along the way in helping you achieve your goals and helping you achieve the things that you want to achieve. And I feel that, you know, whether it be in your life, in like personal life or business life, you just can't be scared to try something because you're scared that you're going to fail at it or you're scared for the fear, fear of failure. So, you know, um, I was a big sports guy, um, big Michael Jordan fan back in the day. And you know, when I saw that quote, um, it's just kind of kind of something that stuck with me, and I try and apply it into my personal and to the business life as well. Right. Yeah. No, that's good. And actually, this is a perfect segue into my next question because I, I found that for me, I've definitely failed. Fail forward, I think, is something I've heard someone said to me once before, and and uh, I've made you know, there's always a lesson when you look back. So, can you share with us an example of something that you failed at in your business and and how and what you learned from it? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, one big thing was back in the recession, I'd call that like 2008, 2009 kind of area. Um, business was a little bit tough to come by, and I'm sure a lot of people would probably agree with that. Um, and at that point in time, I was kind of at a crossroads at my business, and I made the decision um, that I wanted to apply for a job basically for within the industry, but it was more for the security and the guarantee, which is something obviously as brokers that we don't enjoy. Um, 
But after a lengthy interview process, which basically brought me down to the final two candidates of this job, I failed to land that job. And, you know, going through that experience made me really think about kind of what I wanted to do, why I got involved in the mortgage industry in the first place. And it helped me kind of realize um, that, you know, brokering was something that I really loved doing and it helped me reevaluate my business and kind of just move forward from that, from that point. And since that kind of experience, I mean, it's not a big experience, but it was something that was significant in my career that kind of um, made me push forward. And since that time, I haven't really looked back. Right. So you basically, you looked at, you know, exiting the broker business and going into something that's more guaranteed, like you're saying, but then when it didn't pan out, the failure of that job interview has turned into a successful mortgage practice. So it's, it, it's probably, it's a good thing. And, uh, yeah, I know yeah, that. Absolutely. Like, I mean, at the time I looked at it as, you know, it was a failure, but again, like I had mentioned, it just kind of helped me really, really reevaluate why I got into doing this in the first place. Um, because at that point it was just, the only thing I felt was, you know, it's a recession. It's really hard. Things are hard to come by. Business is hard to come by. And that's all that was kind of filling my mind. So the, the natural reaction for me was just to, you know, I got to kind of just leave and do something else. Um, but having that not pan out for me kind of, you know, um, made me, again, it just made me realize that this is really what I wanted to do moving forward. Right. Sometimes removing that option to become, make something more of a, I found for me anyway, when I remove an option of being able to exit, then it makes me press forward and, you know, dig down and find a, find a solution. Yeah, Absolutely. So another thing I found too, talking with successful mortgage brokers is they create processes and, and systems and they're willing to adjust and tweak those systems. And I know that's something I'm obsessed with is constantly making adjustments and tweaks. And so can you share an example of an administrative process that maybe wasn't working as well as you'd like and what kind of adjustment you made to it and what kind of outcome you got? Yeah, I think from an, from an administrative standpoint, um, like last year I made a decision, which was a big decision for me, was to bring on um, a part-time assistant to kind of help me out with, with some of the duties that I feel, you know, as brokers with a lot of paperwork and compliance and all these different types of things, we can get bogged down, especially when things become busy. Um, sometimes you're spending more time than you should on the administrative tasks and the smaller tasks where you need to really be spending them on growing your business. And when I made that decision, um, it helped me free up time to really concentrate on those aspects and, you know, the important things of just sales and relationship building, because that's really the kind of day in, day out things that we thrive on and what we're good at. And, you know, the administrative stuff, you, you have to be focused on those things and be mindful of them. But I think, you know, when it gets to a point where it's taking away from the time that you, you, know, you, that you need to be focusing your, your important time on, um, you know, having somebody to help you out, uh, you can't be scared of that. And I think that, you know, when I made that decision, it really helped free up my time and helped me kind of just focus on the important things within my business. Isn't it a wonderful thing when you have an assistant that is, that's good at their job and, and saves you so much time and headache and, and allows you to focus more on your clients. And like you said, you know, generate, focusing on your clients will generate you more business, but isn't, it's an awesome thing. Yeah, no, I agree. And you know, it's a, uh, financial obligation and, you know, a commitment that you have to make. But, you know, um, and it's just something that I was scared of making because I'd never done it before. But, you know, when I did make that decision to do it, um, it was probably one of the best things from an administrative standpoint that kind of helped me out. Right. That's awesome. And the other, on the flip side, so there's the marketing or the administrative side, but then there's also the sales side or the marketing side. So, and I also happen to really love the, the marketing of the mortgage business. So can you share an example of something either in the sales process or marketing side that you were trying and maybe it wasn't working as well as you'd like and you've made an adjustment? Yeah, I'm, you know, I never really embraced uh, CRM until probably, you know, last year, late 2012. And, you know, I, I, we would always hear that it's important and, um, you know, you have to have one, but I just never really got around to implementing one. And, you know, at this point, I'm still, you know, learning CRM system and how to take advantage of it for my business. But in the time that I have had it, and I've used it, you know, it's definitely generated referrals from existing clients and just helped me keep in touch with my database more so than I ever have before. And I think that's where, you know, we're, we're told it a lot, but a lot of people don't realize that, you know, your gold mine really is your database. And those are people that you've helped already. Those are people that you trust. And those are the people where you're going to generate a lot of business from. So, you know, and it doesn't cost very much to do it. 
So it's it's something that, you know, when I really kind of embraced taking a look at it, um, it re- it's really helped me out. And, I you know, I, I continue to, to, again, learn about it and see how that's going to kind of push me moving forward. And prior to getting hooked up on a CRM, and I assume, what CRM system are you using? Um, I'm on Golmax right now. On Golmax. And how, how have you been finding it? I know that Daryl French was going to love, whatever you're going to say right now, I'm going to send to Daryl so he can hear. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been great. Again, there's a, there's a lot of stuff in there. There's a bunch of tools. But, you know, just the simple things, like even like the auto, uh, the auto email marketing that goes out to say, like, you know, happy birthday to your clients and stuff. Like just yesterday, you know, I, re- I got an email back from a client that said, oh, thanks very much. You remember you remembered my birthday. You know, so like, even though there was an immediate business that came from that, it, it kind of kept me in that client's mind because I remember their birthday, right? Mm-hmm. Or, well, the system really remembered their birthday. So, I mean, you know, if they're remembering those those little things, it keeps helps you keep in touch with those clients. And I think those ultimately will turn into referrals down the road. Yeah, I agree. You know, I get um, I, I, my doctor's office. They send me a text. They're the only people that contact me on my birthday, like that's not like friends or family. And I get this text from my doctor's office wishing me a happy birthday. And I always smile when, and I'm always happy about it. I'm like, oh, they're so awesome. And I know that it's not like my doctor was, you know, typing up the text and sending it to me. I get that. But at the same time, the fact that they cared enough to put the system in place makes me go, hey, they, you know, they're thinking about me. And I, I totally, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so to- sold on that idea. But even the birthday campaign is fantastic. Yeah, no. So, I mean, it, it's something that I, I want to continue to take advantage of and, and learn about. Um, I don't know everything about it yet, but, you know, in the, in the short time that I have had it, just even just those little things, um, like I'd mentioned, they, they, they help out and they help, you know, keep me in clients' minds. That's awesome. And so n- another thing I've noticed, you got a young family like me, yours is even younger than mine. And so how do you balance running a busy mortgage practice and, you know, your mortgage business? Well, you know, I just try and really have the proper mindset and try and keep things in perspective. Um, the, this type of career anyways can be very demanding and at times it can be frustrating. So I just, you know, try and keep my priorities in order and just always remember that, you know, I work in the business ultimately for my family. That's kind of why I do what I do. Um, so that helps me to kind of keep things in perspective and try and keep my priorities straight. So do you ever like track the number of hours or anything that you work in a week? Well, I don't. I wouldn't say I track the number of hours, but you know, I know. Let's say, like when my kids have certain activities that they need to attend to, and that I want to be there, I know that I need to work my schedule so that I can be at those things. Or like, uh, if there's things on the weekends that they have, you know, I make sure that, you know, I'm I'm there for those things because I want to be there for those things. And you know, I think the beauty of of our business is that we can do those things. At times, like I said, it, it can be a little bit you know, frustrating and there's just so much on the go, maybe files are going wrong or what have you. But I mean, overall, I think if you're kind of just managing your priorities and keeping them in order that, you know, you, you can make that balance for sure. Right. You know, I've got this program called schedule once. And so basically it's a program that has access to my whole calendar. And instead of me, you know, going back and forth with my client, trying to figure out what I'm going to meet, I just send them a link and then they see, they can pick the time that works for them in my calendar which saves a whole bunch of time. But the really cool part is I can actually block out times that I don't want to be, you know, if I'm, if I book something with my kids, I block it out. Nobody can book over top of that. And it's not like they can say, Hey, can I meet you at nine on Friday? And it's, you don't even have to have the conversation because the program kind of does it for you. So it's a fantastic program. If you, uh, and there's a few of them out there like it. The one I'm using is schedule once, but it's a pretty cool program for managing that so that you can fit those things in and check it out if you haven't already. For sure. So now I want to move to the rapid fire questions, which are, you can answer these with a little shorter answers. So what do you think is the number one thing holding back most mortgage brokers from being successful? I think it's just uh, putting a good game plan together, um, putting in place and just going out and executing. I think that's the number one thing that probably holds people back. Um, We try and, you know, I know when I started in the business, I had to know everything about everything before I went out and did it. I think the business, you know, you learn it as you kind of do it. So it's just going out there and, you know, if you have a game plan, just go out and execute it. I'm going to actually come back to that thought in a sec, and, but I'm going to go to the right because it's supposed to be rapid fire questions, not in depth, but I want to ask you something more about that. So I'll come back. So what one thing or habit do you think has made you successful? Persistence. That's good. 
do you, you have an internet resource or software program? So you said Go Max. Do you have another one that you use that makes your makes your business easier or more successful? I use Dropbox quite a bit for the for the documents that I handle quite frequently. Cool. Yeah, I, I Dropbox is awesome. And if you could recommend a book for our listeners, what would it be? I'd recommend Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. Yeah, I've, I haven't read that one in a while, but it was a good one for sure. And uh, where do you think our industry is headed? Where's the opportunity right now? Um, this is rapid fire. I've got a little bit of a longer answer for this. Go, one. You can go longer on it. That's good. Um, I just think the industry is headed for continual change, um, whether it be you know further, further regulations or consolidation of brokerage companies. Um, I think it's definitely a little bit more challenging maybe than it was several years ago. And that challenge may be it might force some, some brokers out of the industry. But I think for those who kind of embrace changes, adapt accordingly, I think that there's great opportunity for them. Um, there's lots of things coming down the pipe. It seems that cross-sell is a big one. Um, so, you know, I think those are opportunities for us as brokers in the, in the future. You know, if those things kind of come to fruition, come down the pipe, where there's additional revenue streams that we might have moving forward. Yeah, actually, I'm going to go back there for a second. So the, the diversifying your income is basically what you're talking about. So what's your is that's an area of your business that you're looking at expanding and if you are where where do you think where's the first place you're going to look yeah i think right now um something that i'd like to kind of focus on is looking at uh, potential commercial opportunities so it's not something that i really know too much about and it's not something that i want to know a lot about uh, because i'm not an expert in that field i'm more like on the residential side of things but um, you know, one thing that I wanted to look at moving into this particular business year was to be able to identify those opportunities and make the proper referrals out to either, you know, individuals or to other companies. And, you know, those are, those are future additional revenue streams for me. Right. Yeah, no, that's good. I, I definitely everybody that I've been talking to, most everybody anyway, has been thinking more about, multi, you know, diversifying their income and, and different revenue streams or referral partners. And com- I haven't got, never got into the commercial myself. I, I've been very much focused on the residential. It seems like a whole different animal, and the just the to learn it feels like I'd rather just refer it than learn it. Yeah, and like I mean, like I said, I don't want to be an expert in it, but I think that there's opportunities that are there. Um, I myself, like I deal with a lot of business for self clients um, on on the residential side, but I feel that there could be opportunities on on commercial too as well. Not not for me to know it necessarily, but for me to identify it and make that referral out. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. Identify it and then and then point them in the right direction. So I said to you, I'm going to come back to the game plan. So you said that the the one thing that's uh, holding back most mortgage brokers is not having a game plan. So can you give me an example of sort of how you maybe game plan your do you game plan your year? Do you game plan your day or your week or what is that? How do you give me an example yeah, of how I you mean, do that? I, think I break it down into different segments. So I've got like my yearly that I do it kind of at the beginning of the year. And then I'll go to quarterly, and then I'll go to monthly, and then I'm at weekly. So, you know, I'm always consistently looking at kind of what my activity schedule is like, what my longer-term goals are like, and just making sure that they all kind of mesh together as to where I want to go. And, you know, if I look at my numbers and it's not where I feel I need to be or if if I'm not on track based on what the goals that I've set for myself, then obviously I feel that I need to make an adjustment that's there. So, you know, it's that old adage like if you don't have that plan you don't know where you're going to go right like we've heard that over and over and over again um but even though sometimes we've heard it a lot of people don't implement it and i think that you know if you implement the right things that you should be doing and you have that game plan i I don't feel that the business is really that hard it's just i think what sometimes is hard is actually just the the executing portion of it Mm -hmm. call reluctance or just getting get going for me i find anyway it can be something you don't want to or just getting focused on work. And so, yeah, and I you, think all of us kind of get, get that at times. But, you know, if you have something that's kind of keeping you on track or something that at least you can go back to, you know, then it can kind of keep you going down the, down, down the right road, right? Whereas if you don't have anything that's in place, you have nothing written down, then it's easy to become sidetracked and you just kind of, well, today's the write-off, let's go to the next day type of thing, right? So... Right, you need a track to run on. So, do you use like how do you how do you map that out? Just so that I have a little bit more. Do you use like in a spreadsheet? Do you use like a do you have a template or how do you how are you doing that? Just through yeah, just through simple spreadsheet. Um, nothing like no crazy program or anything like that. Nothing that I've come across, anyways. But it's just always how I've kind of tracked myself. Yeah, no, that's that's good advice for sure. 
And so the last question I want to ask you is the DeLorean question. Remember the movie Back to the Future? Right. And so the car, you could travel in time. And, and so if you had the DeLorean and it, you could go anywhere you want and you decide, hey, of all the places I want to go, I want to go visit myself on my first day of mortgage brokering. And you've got, you know, a 15, you got a, you're going to 15 minutes to give yourself three pieces of advice. What would you, what would you tell yourself? I would say the other three pieces, number, number one, uh, start a CRM program right from day one, the, the day you get started, learn one and implement it. Um, two, concentrate on leveraging your business through others. Um, you're always kind of stronger if you've got various different centers of influence that can kind of push business to you. And I'd say number three is just always have a business plan that you're constantly monitoring and changing. I could go back to, to day one, the day that I started. Those would kind of be the three things. That you think would make the big impact today. And so when you say uh, number two, and you said leveraging through others, so what, give me, let, just go there a little bit deeper for me. Explain to me what you mean. I, I think just, you know, when you're, when you're building your relationships and, you know, you're going to be building it with each individual person, each individual client, but, you know, I think you're stronger through leverage. So what I mean by that is, you know, look at people or centers of influence that have the ability to push business your way. So whether it be, you know, obviously your realtors, that's that's one of the big ones, or if not the biggest, um, your financial planners, uh, your your lawyers. So people that kind of, you know, they touch your business in some way, whether it be directly or indirectly, and they have reach to more people than you ever would. So if you get a bunch of those kind of in place, I think rather than going after the individual client, um, you know, flyering out maybe 5,000 houses in a neighborhood or something, I think you're stronger that way. Right. So you, you just leverage those relationships. Yeah, absolutely. No, this, this has been awesome. Thank you. I'm, I, the one, every, every interview that I do, I always think, okay, what's one thing that I'm going to, I'm going to focus on after the interview. And you reminded me, I've had a plan in the past, like a, a game plan, but honestly, if I'm honest, I'd don't have a very clear game plan for this year. And uh, so you've kicked, give me a kick in the pants. I'm going to look at that, make an adjustment to my, uh, make, making sure I have something mapped out. Cause I think you're right. The time, the years that I've had very successful years, I usually had a plan. And so it wasn't like I was just winging it. Yeah, for sure. So thanks so much, Richard, for your time. And so how can people find you online? Um, they could find me online just at, uh, www.mortgagearchitects.ca backslash Richard de Guzman. Um, that's kind of where they can find me directly right now. And I am currently working on a couple of other websites right now. Um, not live yet, but um, soon to be hopefully by, you know, the end of summertime, I'm hoping. And are you guys hiring at all? Uh, we're, we're, we're definitely looking for um, some experienced agents. So um, if anyone wants to get in contact with myself again, either through that website or through my email, um, which would be richard.deguzman at mortgagearchitects.ca. Awesome. Thanks, Richard. And anybody who's listening to the show can go to ilovemortgagebrokering.com and search for Richard, and up your show notes will pop up, plus all the stuff that we talked about and a link to be able to, to find Richard. So thanks again so much, Richard, and I look forward to hope you're having a you know an awesome rest of your year, and I'm going to get my, my own one-year plan started pretty quick. Hey, same to you, Scott. Thanks so much. Want to rock your mortgage business? Then crank up the volume with your host, Scott Heckberg, on I Love Mortgage Brokering. Hi, Broker Nation. If you enjoyed this interview, please take a minute, visit iTunes, and rate this podcast. If you do, you'll get three deals in the next month. Okay, that's not true, but I would really appreciate it. Also, I want to invite you to join me on a quest. After every episode, I personally take five minutes and think about one thing or one idea I can use to improve my mortgage business. I encourage you to do the same. Over the next 12 months, I plan to do 100 interviews and make 100 improvements. I'm going to track these to see how they impact my business and, more importantly, my bottom line. Visit ilovemortgagebrokering.com and post in the show notes what one thing you plan to do differently after listening to this interview and check out what other brokers are sharing. Also, if you'd like to connect with me, fire me an email at scott at robyourbank.com. I love hearing from passionate mortgage professionals who are interested in improving their business. Until next time, rock on.